Member for North Sydney. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Today, as I reflect on the past five months, I'd like to thank my community of North Sydney for continuing to work with me to help change the climate here in Canberra. The result of the May election sent what I think we can all agree was a clear message to our federal government. The people of North Sydney, and indeed Australians more broadly, want their leaders to do better. They want inspiring and courageous leadership in a national government prepared to coordinate across state borders. They want to see appropriate federal stimulus, be that financial, intellectual or human capital. Australians want to see our country investing in building new skills, capabilities and innovative industries to succeed in today's high-tech, rapidly decarbonising world, as well as investing in our people and communities. Australians want to address long-standing structural issues to ensure all Australians, be they young, old and everything in between, can continue to live in the lucky and progressive country. Since August, our North Sydney voice has been heard clearly here in Parliament in areas as diverse as faster action on climate, integrity in politics, the more humane treatment of people seeking asylum in Australia and, ultimately, greater accountability in how our government allocates our public money. During this time, I've been honoured to work as North Sydney's representative in this House, pushing the government to ensure the legislative proposals not only meet the needs of my community, but that they are also thought through beyond the immediate, short-term positive headlines. Ultimately, North Sydney has played an active role in shaping current government policy for the better. In the recent Fair Work Bill, for example, after consulting with the people of North Sydney, I moved an amendment which we su was supported by both the Labor and Liberal parties, as well as my crossbench colleagues, to ensure those at the decision-making table are representative of the whole building industry, not just big unions or large construction companies. My amendment ensured small and medium builders will now have a voice at the National Construction Industry Forum and that the work of that forum will be publicly accountable through the publishing of a communique within 14 days of their meetings. Last week, I also moved amendments to the National Anti-Corruption Commission Bill, which advocated for stronger mechanisms to watch the watchdog. Sadly, there will always be powerful interests seeking to persuade the government of the day to downgrade the effectiveness of the National Anti-Corruption Commission. There is an opportunity to do something unprecedented in this place through the establishment of a truly independent commission. The amendment I moved sought to deliver this by appointing an independent chair of the Oversight Committee. I have advocated for these changes since my very first meeting and conversation with the Attorney-General many months ago, and I am heartened that the argument for this amendment continues in the Senate. If it happens, the people of North Sydney can be proud of the role that we played. Today we saw the tabling of the committee report into parliamentary code of conduct, which now, together with the Corruption Commission, will help change the culture for the better in our federal politics. Our parliament has been considering a code for almost half a century, with a report in 1975 noting that a meaningful code of conduct should exist in the Australian par parliament. And since then, many members in this place have trialed, tried and failed to introduce one. At the last election, people made it clear they expect and demand a higher standard of conduct from their MPs. And as a member of the committee which developed the draft code, <coughs> I'm proud to say we have now finally delivered. And earlier this year, one of the first pieces of legislation North Sydney engaged in was the Climate Change Bill. During this debate, I was driven to take the politics out of climate policy. I advocated for a multi-partisan approach to the establishment of a joint parliamentary committee which reflected the new balance of power across the parliament and for increased integrity and independence for the Climate Change Authority. The initial draft that was shared with me as a member of the crossbench relied heavily on putting the parliamentary and public trust in the Climate Change Minister to do the right thing. But the truth is that's simply not good enough when it comes to legislating positive change. And so I worked with the minister to move the amendments that we were advocating for. Looking towards 2023, I'm committed to working for an enduring legacy, one that, in place, that is in place long beyond any electoral cycle and regardless of who is in government. Both in the immediate future and over the longer term, the government must place faith in the institution of our parliament and the diversity of the community representatives that are here and be a government which is prepared to lead rather than control. As 2022 ends, I look forward to working with everyone in this 47th parliament to deliver on our community's ambitions for faster climate action, 
a return to political integrity, a realisation of gender equality, a regearing of our economy the so it is future ready and a better, fairer way forward for expired. all.